What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today, we are building out masteries for Yugo, our girl, that we grinded masteries inside of the game. We didn't just buy them for the 800 gems. No, we ran Minotaur and grinded for a better value on these masteries, and it was worth the wait. Today, we're diving in and building her out. Before we do, I want to urge you to download Raid Shadow Legends using my QR code above or my download link in the description that directly supports my channel and it does get you Rector Drath, the reviving healing champion at epic status and a bunch of other awards that progress your account quickly. Thanks for the support guys, let's get into the build. So we are going to be building her out for PvE and general related activities such as that. We're going to be focusing on both the offense and the support tree as well. Let's start off with offense. We're going to go with deadly precision to start, which is going to enhance our crit rate by 5%. And then from there, we're going to come down and do keen strike, which is crit damage, another 10% using our scrolls for that. Following, we're moving over one to the left to Heart of Glory. Increases damage inflicted by 5% when attacking with full HP. It's gonna make our girl quite a bit stronger. We're dropping down to the next row and we're gonna go with Life Drinker. Heals by 5% of damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less. So it's gonna allow her to heal herself up a little bit after doing her attacks if she's at half health. Next is Single Out, increases damage inflicted to targets with less than 40% HP by 8%. So she's going to do more damage as well, which is always a nice buff. Bring It Down is next, increases damage inflicted by 6% when attacking targets with higher max experience or max HP, I'm sorry, unlocking that one 100%. And then we're going down to Methodical. We, we use Methodical a lot on a lot of our builds. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it's used during battle. Stacks across each round in a battle up to 10%. So this is one that I love. It gets stronger and stronger as we go. And to finish up the offensive side of the tree, we're going to be coming in with War Master. Has a 60% chance of inflicting bonus damage when attacking. Bonus damage is equal to 10% of the champion's max HP or 4% of the target's max HP when attacking bosses. Bonus damage can only occur once per skill and does not count as an extra hit. War Master has been unlocked and that completes our offensive side of the tree. Next up is support, and then after I do that, we have something very special that we need to do. Because of a fusion that's going on inside of the game right now, we need to make sure that we take full advantage of events, which will happen after we finish out this mastery tree. Moving over to the support side, we're going to start with pinpoint accuracy, increasing accuracy plus 10, and we are definitely going to be unlocking that branch. Following, we're going to go to Charged Focus. Increases accuracy by 20 when this champion has no skills on cooldown. So essentially in the beginning of the match and during middle sections as well, potentially. Swarm Smitter. Increases accuracy by 4 for each enemy alive and stacks up to 16. Yes, please. This is going to be an accuracy beast we're building here with a lot of damage dropping as well and a small healing element. Then we have Lore of Steel, increases the base stat set bonuses of all artifact sets that increase base stats by 15%. This increase is multiplicative, not additive. Sounds good. That one always sounds a bit confusing and is difficult to get through. Evil Eye, decreases the target's turn meter when this champion hits them with a the default skill for the first time. Decreases the turn meter by 20% with, with single target skills and 5% with AOE skills. Occurs once per target. Taking away the turn meter is great. Less chances for them to do damage on us. Sniper, increases the chances of placing any debuff from skills or artifacts by 5%, but it won't affect, it won't will not increase the chances of placing stun, sleep, freeze, fear, true fear, provoke, or petrification. And we are not going to the bottom row, but instead we're coming over to Master Hexer. Has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any buff cast by this champion by one turn. It does not extend those ones shown right here. So there we go. Masteries are completed right now for Yugo, which is actually quite nice. Finally built out two six stars and uh, fully 
has all of that ascension done as well, which is freaking nice. So Hugo is ready to go into battle. Now, if you guys don't know, on this channel, I take you through my daily. I take you through the grind of what I'm doing, and I throw tips and hints at you as we go so that you can better your play inside of the game, especially if you're a brand new player. And right now inside of the game, we have an event going on that has a lot of tournaments that really focuses on a fusion. We've been doing tons of work over here. Arena Takedown is complete. Champion Chase is what we need to focus on right here. This is more difficult to do, especially when you're trying to really make sure that you pull your shards at the right time. But we need to get one of these fragments. And when you take a look at the info over here, we could do this by pulling legendary champions, epic, rare, uncommon, etc., etc., even mythical. So what we're gonna try to do today is pull one sacred shard, because this sacred shard currently has two events going on, and one of them is a two times chance of legendary champions. It has been a while since we've gotten anything good out of shards. Plus, if I get a legendary champion, this will allow me to get those 500 points so I could secure that fragment. Once I secure that fragment, I am set up for the rest of this fusion to be successful and to be able to unlock Shayek. This guy. I really like this guy. And I'm excited to grab him. We've already gotten 75% of the fusion done. And what we're looking at right now, what we need to do right here with this shard pull is really hope that we get lucky with this sacred. If we don't, we have a bunch of others we could pull, but there's no double events going on. So I'm trying to min max my experience here. Uh, I need you guys to do one thing. If you throw a like on the video, it gives me extra luck. Let's go. What are we gonna grab? Give me the two times chance. Let's go, come on, it's an epic. It's not the legendary we wanted. I did still get 250 points and we have the priest Orn. I wonder if he's any good. All right, so we got himself a four star rating over on hellhades.com. So that means he's definitely got some uses. Let's take a look at his skills. Spore stick attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 50% chance of placing a poison. Oh, okay. I like, I like poison stuff. Erupting Growths attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 70% chance of instantly activating a 5% poison. Nice. Uh, and this is the Colony Expands. Attacks all enemies and has a 50% chance of placing a 5% poison debuffs po and a 25% poison sensitivity debuff for two turns. Heals this champion by 1% of their max piece, uh, HP for each poison debuff placed by this skill. All right, and the passive that he's using is whenever a poison debuff is activated on an enemy, increases the champion's HP and defense by 5%, stacks to 25. Hmm, I'll tell you, I think we can find a place for this guy. We are always looking for new poisoning champions inside of the game. And although I'm a little bit sad that we didn't get ourselves a legendary because we wanted those extra points, I think we did just pick ourselves up a, uh, a nice champion that actually has some utility. And we did get ourselves another step closer towards the fragment that we need. We need just a little bit more. And honestly, I could just go ahead and pull our green shards, our mysteries along the way and get what we need to get there and not have to waste any of the ancients, voids or primals until I have another two times event. But the overall highlight and feature of this video was Yugo. She's looking like a boss. I can't wait to take her into battle, see what she can do. And I hope that you guys found some value inside of this video and enjoy the build yourself. Let me know your thoughts down below. Remember to subscribe and download Raid using my code above or my link in the description. I'll see you guys tomorrow.